my channel today in this tutorial i am going to explain that how we are going to use this pagination while we are using the jpa you know certain times some tables having lot of data but if we want to display all the data in a page so that is actually having lot of space is required maybe we need to do some scrolling kind of things but there is a concept of the paginations like instead of showing all the details at the same time we can do some kind of the pagination kind of things like let's say if we are having some transaction tables in our database so transaction contains lot of transactions actually for a particular employee or particular user now if we want to fetch all the transaction maybe it will take some time right because uh, whenever it will try to fetch all the records maybe million of records so it will take lots of time to fetch all the records right from the transaction table but instead of that if we want to display those information page wise let's say if we have the 100 information 100 transaction and if we want to display in the first page let's say it's a 10 number of records then we will only fetch only the 10 records from the database it will actually boost the performance and also it will looks better than the like if we load the 100 records right so if for the each means if we say like each page we need to 10 records so that display the 10 records so we need to like 10 times pagination is required right for showing the all the details so pagination is a crucial aspect of handling large data set efficiently in any web application so here we are going to implement the pagination in a spring boot applications using java jpa we will also focus there how the page size is seamlessly mapped with the data present in the database so that it will be making it easy to manage and the present the information to the user okay so next basically we are going to create one project so for creating the project from the spring boot initializer we can create the project and here you can see those dependencies let me zoom it little bit because uh, the text are showing little smaller i hope it's fine now so here you can see that we are using the java version 17 spring boot starter data jpa these dependencies as we are going to use the data jpa so that's why this data jp is needed starter web as the database wise we are going to use this mysql so that's why mysql connected j this dependencies is needed and these are the some other dependencies which are like optional kind of things okay so this is the like dependencies wise that we need to add over here so next basically we are going to create uh, like one entity let's say transaction into our database okay before that also let like put all the database related information over here okay so let's say we are going to create the jpa underscore paginations there is the that is the one url that we need to create so this schema already i have created in mysql okay then after that we need to provide the username and password over here after that we need to define that drive driver class like what kind of database like as you can see here we are going to use this mysql so the database driver name is the mysql cjdbc driver and for this this property is basically going to be used okay also we are going to use this mysql dialect and other properties few properties which are not mandatory but optional kind of thing these are the properties it will actually basically showing the sql whatever the sql executed in the back end those sql will be it will print in the console and this means whatever the entity we are going to create over here those entities actually they are automatically create into the database we don't need to manually create like create table table and don't need to execute all those things over there okay so next we are going to create this entity so let me create one package over here where actually we are going to keeping those entity related things okay so let me create one package dot entity okay so here i am going to create this transaction table transaction entity basically okay so if you see over here that it's having this id which is auto incremented means once we are going to insert the record into this so this id will be auto populated into the database so we don't need to write any logic for this then transaction type and what is the price okay so let's say transaction type will be 
like uh, maybe it's a KD dot debit and it will be the amount. So instead of price, it will be a amount. Okay. Next, we are going to create the repository respect to this one. So let me create another package over here. Repository. Okay. So here we are going to create this repository over here. Uh, now you can see this is extend this JPA repository. Okay. And next we are going to create one service layer. Okay. Service layer. Why the service layer is needed? Basically, the service layer is needed because like uh, we are going to create uh, uh, one method call which will basically talking with this uh, database and that actually we are going to implement the pagination over here. Okay. So let me create one class over here transaction service and we need to annotate this particular class with uh, at the rate service annotation it is a uh, one type of stereotype of uh, annotation okay next we are going to create one method over here let's say get transaction okay so what input basically we need for this one we need input okay it will basically return page of the entity okay this will be the return type of this one and this page basically we can import from from this spring framework dot data dot domain dot page this end page basically we are going to take over here okay now here it will take two parameter like what will be the page number like for which page basically we need to fetch the details and what will be the page size let's say if there is a hundred records now let's say the page number is the 10 page number is the 2 and the page size will be 10 then it will basically fetch the records from 11 to 20 if it is a page number is 1 and page size is 10 then it will fetch from the 1 to 10 records something like that okay so here we are going to create the pageable request using this okay this pageable also we need to take from this this data dot domain dot pageable so here we need to create one object for pageable using this page request dot off and here we need to pass this page number and the page size so this op basically will take two parameter over here one is the page number and one is the page size after that we are going to call the transaction repository so for that we need to use the transaction repository over here we need to inject this transaction repository over here now based on this like repository dot find all okay so here you can see that find all there is a one empty one another is a pageable so here we are going to use this pageable one and here we need to pass this pageable information okay like instead of creating one object also and also we need to return from over here okay now instead of creating one object basically you can see this pageable is the interface so directly also we can pass these things over here okay so that means this is not required over here so we can directly pass also over here we can't remove the unused import over here so the service layer is done so what it will do it will basically fetch the records based on this page number and the page size okay let's say there is a 10 records in the transaction table now if we want to give the page number is uh, 1 and the page size will be first uh, page size will be the 5 then it will record from the first to 5 records okay so in this way basically this pagination basically work next we are going to create one controller over here so that we can like basically check from the postman or any from the like browser or also if we want to integrate from any third party ui that also we can expose this service so from the controller we need to write one controller let's say transaction controller okay new class transaction controller okay so here basically we need to use two annotation over here to make it as a rest api one is the rest controller another one is the request mapping so this request mapping basically is not mandatory used to over here but we are used to just for defining the path over here okay next we need to inject the transaction service so for injecting the services over here we need to use the auto annotation for injecting the like any bin 
that which is created in a spring basically so as you can see this transaction service we have annotated this class with the service annotation that means we use this particular class as a bin of the spring framework okay now for injecting this one we are going to use this auto -air annotation to inject this particular service into any controller or any services now here basically we are going to create one method like, like get transaction okay we are going to use this get transaction and it will take two parameter basically uh, like page number and the uh, like uh, page size right that two input basically we need from the whenever it's basically consume so here you can see that we are going to use this request param this one the page number and the page size so if someone is not passing this page number and the page size so it will take the default values for the page number is zero and for the page size it will be a 10 so these are the basically default size if someone like not passing any parameters for this one so then basically it will like use the default values instead of like uh, not taking the instead of like it will take the default value for the page number is 0 and for the page size it will take as a 10 okay now we can provide some kind now like over here we are going to let's say public void for the time being i am keeping this as a void okay so let me break this one now from here we are going to call the transaction service okay this service basically we are going to call over here transaction service dot get transaction get transaction and here we are going to pass this page number and the page size what it will return it will basically return page of transaction right it will return page of transaction so page of this page of transaction this entity okay and here we can say transaction list of transaction okay what it is saying change the type transaction to okay so i think i removed i add some jakarta transaction okay that's why it's getting confused so i need to use this jts one this is the custom transaction entity okay now we just return this from over here so how we are going to return this like response entity using this over here and here we are going to return this one okay and here it will be a transactions so this is done now okay and also you need to change the return type to this okay so now this is done next what we will do like uh, we will start this application and in a database we will create this entity it will automatically got created actually and i have also like put some data over here just to check as you can see over here so i have like inserted 20 records 40 records over here just to check like the pagination is working or not okay so now we can start this application okay how we are going to start this application from the main class like this is the main entry point of this spring boot application we can run this as a run as a java application okay so once it will start basically then we can check from the either postman or from the browser because it's ultimately it's a gate method so gate method like we can check because gate method doesn't need any body we just it just need the request param over here okay once it will start then we can like uh, check from the postman looks like it started it's added the connection over here okay so now from the postman we can check okay so we can create the request over here so the path will be localhost and the tomcat started in a 80 port then after that api slash so over here you can see that api slash and here also we need to like map this as gate mapping else it will not expose right so gate mapping and also here we can provide some path over here let's say t actions okay transactions or we can also give some full form over here like transactions okay so let's save it so that it will again restart it it will take some time okay looks like started now now like we can provide this path over here okay now suppose initially if you are not passing any page size or the 
number of page this parameter right page size and the page number the, if we are not passing these parameters anything then default value it should take the 0 and the 20 right so let's send this one let's let's see that what it's returning basically initially it will take some time then it will work fast we are getting the 200 response code but data is coming looks like as you can see over here okay you can see the data is coming over here so you can see the total page because it's take the default one 10 so means for each page we need the 10 records so that's why it's showing the, it's the total page number total page is the 4 because total elements is the 40 so for each page we need the 10 records so you can see from 1 to like 10 records we are we have got over here right so we have got the 10 records over here you can see that all the information over page size is 10 page number is like 0 so now like we need to pass those parameter like this page number and the page size right so here we can like in the params basically we can page numbers see like this uh, page number and the page size so let's say page number is now 2 and the page size will be 10 okay now let uh, send the request over here so you can see that now here you can see that uh, total page is 4 and total element is 40 over here okay i think the page number is page number this one okay because that's why this is the page number that's why it was taking the default one you can see that it's again like phase the data from the 1 to 10 right it's not taking this parameter because the param name was different in the controller now let's uh, call this one okay now you can see that number it's 2 right page number is 2 and here you can see the record from the 21 to like uh, this one like if i pass this page number as 1 then we can got the result from the 11 you can see the yes the 11 to 20 right 11 to 20 records that we are getting over here now if we see the console over here so here also it will print the sql over here so you can see it's internally basically using the limit for mysql and here it is passing the initial and the from where to where actually from like 0 to 10 or 1 to 20 something like that this is basically limit actually working so in this way internally it's executing this sql for fetching the records for this pagination kind of thing okay now let's say if we want the page size will be 20 okay and the page number will be 1 so let's see that what it will return it will return from the 21 to 40 right you can see the 21 to 40 now if the page size page number will be started from the 0 actually this is the initial index okay you can see from the 1 to like this 20 okay so in this way basically actually this pagination got worked and you see like we have not did some complex kind of things over here right? it's a kind of very easy we just need to follow some like kind of syntax kind of things over here if you see the service layer over here we just create one pageable request over here using this and here we just need to pass this page number and the page size and the internally it will taken care of all the complexities over there we just don't need to manually maintain everything page number and page size all those things internally it will taken care of all the things over here so this is overall the things that how we are going to use the paginations for better performance while loading the loading some lots of data like transaction kind of things how we are do apply the pagination kind of things so this is the overall things still if you guys have anything please do let me know in the comment section i will definitely try to uh, cover those points don't forget to subscribe my channel please press the bell icon for further notifications thanks for your time thank you see you in my next videos bye bye